Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Titan 120X, a new micro quadcopter by Jilang, which is equipped with the Cadex Vista digital FPV transmission system. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up using the recommended settings that were sent to me by Jilang, and then head outdoors and test it out. In terms of packaging, the Titan 120X comes well protected inside this nice little box, and along with the quadcopter you're getting four plastic propeller guards, an extra white semi-transparent canopy, one set of Gemfen 2540 and Emacs Avant 2.5 inch propellers, an extra battery velcro strap which is a little bit longer than the one which is already pre-inserted on the bottom of the quadcopter, a USB to micro USB cable, a micro USB to USB Type-C adapter, a Phillips screwdriver, a hex key driver, and two aluminum standoffs which along with the included 3D printed TPU part which is connected to a carbon fiber plate will enable you to mount an Insta360 GO camera, which unfortunately I still don't have, on the back of the quadcopter. In terms of specs, the Titan 120X features Jilang 1204 4500 kV motors, which can handle up to 4S batteries, an all-in-one tooth textile F4 flight controller, which came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.1.1 and features an integrated 20A 4-in-1 BLLES ESC, a small buzzer is pre-soldered to the flight controller, on the front you can find the camera unit of the Cadex Vista, its angle is not adjustable and its lens is protected by a 3D printed PLA part. Behind the camera, mounted to the canopy, you can find the Vista transmission unit. The Rush Cherry antenna is well mounted on the back of the quadcopter using this 3D printed TPU part. And in case you've got a Bunnyfly version, a radio receiver is going to be pre-soldered to the flight controller. As for the frame, its wheelbase is 120mm. It features a death cat pattern, so the propellers are not going to get in your view, and the thickness of the bottom unibody plate is 2.5mm. In addition, the weight of the Titan 120X is 103.1g and 121.7g including the plastic propeller guards. As for these propeller guards, since they are made out of plastic and not very flexible, in my opinion they are not going to be very durable, so I only recommend to use them in case you are a beginner or you would like to fly the Titan 120X indoors. As I mentioned before, originally the flight controller came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.1.1, so before applying the settings which I'm about to show you, make sure to update its firmware to Betaflight 4.2.0 using the hex file which you can find the link to in the description box of this video. Now let's quickly go through the updated Betaflight configuration that was sent to me by Jilan, which I'm also going to include in the description box of this video since it seems to work pretty well. First of all, under the ports tab, the configuration slash MSP switch is enabled on your one in order to display the battery voltage of the quadcopter and the custom OSD elements on the DJI goggles, and the serial rig switch is enabled on your two. Next, under the configuration tab, the EC slash motor protocol is set to DSHOT 600, and the bidirectional DSHOT switch is enabled in order to use Betaflight's RPM filter, and by the way, in order to enable it, you will also need to flash the 4-in-1 EC with a compatible Jazz Maverick firmware, which you can find the link to in the description box of this video. In order to get the correct battery voltage and current readings, the voltage meter and the amperage meter should be set to the following values. And finally here you can see the custom PID profile settings, the rate profile settings, and the filter settings. In order to make it easier for you, all these settings are going to be included in a dump file, which you can use by heading over to the CLI tab, hit the load from file, Select the downloaded file, then hit execute, and then type save and press enter in order to save the settings. That's going to be your starting point, and basically after that all you have to do is to bind the radio receiver with your radio controller, make sure that all the sticks are working properly under the receiver tab, and define the favorite flight modes and OSD elements. In addition, in case you haven't done it already, you should activate the Cadix Vista and update its firmware using the DJI Assistant software, and bind it with your DJI goggles. The next thing that I've done is to test the Titan using different batteries. Unfortunately, the recommended battery by Jilang is a 650mAh for its battery, which I don't have, and among the batteries that I've tested, I think that the one that works best in terms of performance and flight time is a 520mAh for its LHV battery, which should provide you with between 4 to 6 minutes of flight time, depending on how you fly. The weight of the Titan, including this battery, is about 160 grams, and in case you are going to use the propeller guards, the flight time is going to be reduced by a minute or so. In addition, I also tested the Titan with the 4S 850mAh LiPo battery, which feels a little bit on the heavy side, 
and it is mainly good for cruising around and will provide you with about 9 minutes of flight time. In terms of performance, I think that the Titan is somewhere in between the Transtec Beetle and the Ishin V-Swoop. If we compare these two options, I think that the Titan is superior than the V-Swoop, first of all because its build quality is better, it features a full range ready receiver, whereas the built-in SPRX receiver of the V-Swoop is pretty limited, their flight time is about the same, and I think that the price difference is pretty small. As for the Transtec Beetle, if we compare the Titan with the Mini version, I think that the Titan is better since the Beetle Mini is using 2 inch propellers which are not as efficient as the 2.5 inch propellers of the Titan. And if we compare it with the 2.5 inch version, I think that you should go for the Transtec Beetle in case you are looking for a powerful mini quadcopter which features a full sized DJI air unit on board, and for the Titan if you are looking for a cheaper and lighter setup. So overall I think that the Titan is a fun little quadcopter, as it features a cool design, the propellers are not going to get in your view. Except the frame, which is still better than the frame of the Lightning 120X, it features high quality parts. The canopy is soft mounted using 3D printed TPU parts, which are going to reduce the jello in your flight footage. And for its price, I think that you are getting a pretty good value for money. On the other hand, the main downsides in my opinion are that the quality of the frame is not amazing, and I'm not sure how durable it's going to be, and the angle of the camera is not adjustable, which makes it a little bit harder to fly it at a lower speed. One more thing before wrapping up this video. You should note that the Titan comes with a single set of Emacs Avan 2.5 inch propellers which are more performance oriented and a single set of Gemfen 2540 propellers which are more flight time oriented. Anyway, a single set is not enough, so in case you are going to get the Titan, make sure to get more propellers. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, and as always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos, and goodbye.